All right, welcome to our redox titration. Today we're going to do a redox titration to see if we can find out the concentration of sulfur dioxide in this white wine. Now the white wine is uh, Lindemann Vin 65 Chardonnay. So it's important you write that name down so that we, we're not comparing all wines. Sulfur dioxide is an additive put into wines by wineries. It's a preservative, it keeps the wine fresher for longer, uh, it kills bacterial growth, it also speeds up the fermentation process so they can get their wine to market quicker. There are strict limits on the amount of sulfur dioxide you can add to wine because it isn't that healthy. Some people have allergic reactions to it and it's certainly been linked to headaches and other problems. So this wine, we're going to see what concentration of sulfur dioxide they've put into it. Alright, to do it, we have to first of all free the sulfur dioxide. So when they pump the sulfur dioxide into a wine, it reacts and it's going to form sulfites. Now those sulfites, we're going to get to become sulfur dioxide, aqueous sulfur dioxide. Now to do it, we are going to get some sodium hydroxide. Now I need 15 mils of sodium hydroxide. I'm gonna put it into these conical flasks. I'm not really concerned about exact amounts here because this is an excess reaction. We're just trying to get all of the sulfites to convert to sulfur dioxide. So I don't need any kind of level of accuracy. I'm looking for around about 15 mil. I don't need a burette for this. I simply need a measuring cylinder. Okay, now I'm gonna get exactly 20 mil. So this is a pipette, it's a 20.00. That's really important for our significant figures. And I'm gonna see if I can draw out 20 mils, 20.00 mils of this wine. So if I grab the wine, the first thing I wanna do is ensure that this is a clean pipette. So to do that, I'm going to draw up a little bit. I'm not really concerned at how much. It's probably easier if I remove the pipette bulk here. And I want to just see if I can get that wine to coat every single surface and just take out any impurities, whatever was used in there before. I'm doing my best to coat every surface with the wine. I don't know if you can see it from there. And we're going to pour it into there. And hopefully, that's got rid of any impurities, anything that could reduce our concentration. When I'm happy that that's been rinsed properly, I'm now going to draw up exactly 20 mil, or 20.00. So if I do this, remembering the meniscus that we've talked about before. There we are. I'm going to put that into here. So the wine is going to go in with the uh, sodium hydroxide. That's going to sit there for about 15 minutes. And while that's happening, all of the sulfites, different compounds with sulfur in them, are going to turn into aqueous sulfur dioxide. Now, once again, that's aqueous, so it's not going to escape. I can leave it open. I can leave it for 15 minutes. I can even leave it for longer. So I'll make up four, five of those. All right, step one done, thanks. Okay, welcome back to part two. So it's been about 15 minutes. Our wine has been sitting in the sodium hydroxide. Hopefully all of the sulfites have turned into aqueous sulfur dioxide in that first step process. We've got a few of them made up here. Now what I need to do is turn that um, dissolved sulfur dioxide into a gas form of sulfur dioxide for it to actually work. But hopefully you understand, the second I add in my H2SO4 to do that, this gas is going to escape. So I don't want to do that until I'm ready. Okay, so that's going to be just before we titrate. What we are going to do is set up our burette. So this is our burette. Now this burette's probably had acids in it and bases in it. So what we've got to do first up is rinse it. Now we're going to rinse it really carefully. And we're going to rinse it with some of the stuff that's going into it. And what's going into it is this. This is a dilute solution of iodine. So we actually have this made up today. That is the concentration of the iodine, and that's important. So make sure you put that down in your results. And we are going to just rinse this burette with a little bit of my iodine. iodine, 
see it down the bottom there. And I'm just trying my best to touch every surface to try and rinse it out. Get any little particles out. All the way up. Okay, all the way to the top. Happy with that being up the top. And I won't forget the tip down the bottom to rinse that out. So I'll run some of it through there. Get all of it out. Get a little bit out the top. So I'm now happy that that's rinsed. I'm now going to put some of the iodine in it for real. Okay. Now it's always a good idea to not pour chemicals above your eye level. Luckily I'm quite high up here, so probably not pouring it above my eye level. If you are concerned, it's safer to remove this and put it down onto the floor. But I'm not really concerned at this if I stand back far enough. Just to make sure that that taps off, we don't want to lose all that good stuff. Now I'm not really concerned where I fill it up to. Obviously I don't want to go above zero, then I can't read it. Um, I don't want to go too low because I don't want to run out. So I'll fill it up to around about a nice eye level. Maybe the 10 mark. But I'm not really aiming yet, not really concerned because you might notice that the tip down the bottom is empty. So I've got to run some stuff into the tip. Just got my waste container here. Um, remove the top. We're going to run this into the tip, making sure I've got rid of any air bubbles because they can stuff out the results up. So that's looking good. I'm now going to have a good look, looking at the meniscus. So I am exactly here at 8.08. So our first result, the initial, 8.08 mils. I'm now going to put in my H2SO4 into here and I'm also going to add in my starch. So my starch is here. My starch is going to be my indicator because what's going to happen is when this and this react, that will take each other out of the equation. When all of this sulfur dioxide is gone, then I'll get an excess of this. And the excess of ID will be picked up by iodine and starch makes a bluey black colour. So that's the idea. I'm going to put a couple of drops in here. Now, the number of drops doesn't really matter so much. I'm going to do five drops and just remember five drops for each of them to keep it fair. That's the starch. We're going to use that starch as an indicator of when I've suddenly got excess of the iodine. Now I have to add in the last possible second my 10 mil of H2SO4. Remembering that that H2SO4 is going to make the SO2 that's aqueous turn into SO2 that is now a gas. So that's my last possible step. Once again, I'm using a measuring cylinder here because the amount, the exact amount, isn't really important. But once I pour that in, I've got to start my titration. So just double check I've got everything. I've got an initial. I'm going to start my titration. I've definitely got my starch in. I think we're good to go. Here we go. Okay, here we go. Okay, so hopefully you can see what's going on here. So we're reacting this. And as this is reacting, imagine the little iodines, the I2s, coming from here are reacting with the SO2s. And what's going to happen is, oh, it smells lovely. It smells like bad wine. What's going to happen is, as those SO2s and I2s meet, they're going to take each other out of the equation. And the second that we have too much I2, the second we've got not enough SO2 to, take, to get rid of the I2s, that I2 is going to then react with the starch. And I can see a little bit of blackening up here. I feel like we're close, so I'm going to slow down and maybe Concentrate for a little bit.
Okay. I'm just seeing the initial first bits of black in there. So I could go further, but it's always a good idea to just check how much I've put in. So I'll write that number down and I'm seeing 45, 45.68. Now that I've got that written down, I can go a little bit further and see how much more I can actually do. Okay, welcome back. Now we've done five titrations and what's really interesting is the first ones that we've done have really started to fade. You can tell the last one that we've done. The results for them, and remember, all that we have to do is get the colour to stay for at least a couple of minutes and it certainly did. So this is a process that took me around about half an hour. So as they've sat there, they've lasted their colour and they've started to fade. But it's really important that you get your results here. So write these results down. We have the initial titration for five, the initial reading for five, the final reading for the five. What you have to do from here is work out what the titers were for each of the five. And then what's really important is to work out your average of your concordant titers. Hopefully you understand what that means. That is it. That is our redox titration to see if we can work out the concentration of sulfur dioxide in the wine that we use, the Lindemann Fin 65. Your job from seeing these results is to work out if this wine is up to Australian standards, if this wine is safe, if the, what the concentration of sulfur dioxide in this wine is. Good luck.